Hi, I'm David Hamburger, and this summer at Rocky Mountain Guitar Camp, I'll be teaching fingerstyle blues and blues improvisation. We'll start off with some eight bar blues tunes like Trouble in Mind or St. James Infirmary, and look at the difference between the steady bass and the alternating thumb style. And then spend some time looking at how to get your thumb and fingers more coordinated so you can play those blues syncopations while keeping your thumb rock solid. From there, we'll look at how blues musicians phrase their soloing and how you can use phrasing as a way to start building up a vocabulary of licks. You don't necessarily need to know a lot of scales or even to be able to play all over the neck to start playing really convincing improvisations if you're aware of how to phrase and how to make things sound musical, which really anybody can learn how to do. We'll also look at your groove and how to get things to feel really solid. Some of the things that blues musicians use like palm muting and rakes and damping, and those kind of things. And finally talk about some of the things that make an arrangement sound more complete, like how to start coming up with your own intros and endings and vamps. So those are some of the things I hope we cover this summer. I'm really looking forward to meeting everybody and getting to play a whole lot of guitar. Well, hello everybody. This is Jim Nichols from the Rocky Mountain Guitar Camp with a little preview of uh, this uh, coming uh, camp. And uh, here's an old country blues that I just sort of made up right now. <laughs> picking thing there. So basically, I learned to play by copying things as a kid and still to this day. And everybody I know that's a good player, same thing. They learned to play by copying the things they liked. And along the way, I had to learn a lot of stuff that I may or may not have liked, but uh, it was necessary to make a living. You know, uh, even session players, they usually don't come home raving about well, what a great session that was or something. You just, you do it, you take the money and um, hopefully you get residuals. But uh, anyway, um, so uh, one of the, the first tunes that I learned to play uh, finger style was uh, Trambone uh, by Dwayne Eddy. Chet Atkins, his original version of that was what Dwayne did a version of. And the two versions are slightly different. Of course, I didn't know that at the time, so I learned Dwayne's version, and then years later I heard Chet's version and learned how to play that, basically. And so this is, this is true for a lot of music over the years. You'll hear different versions of things. Sometimes they're, they're both interesting if there's two versions. Sometimes one is great and one is not so good, but uh, you, that's where your ear comes into play in, in learning uh, how to play things with the right chords, the right melodies, the right licks, etc. So, um, practically for me, I learned easy things first, uh, you know, Buddy Holly tunes and Everly Brothers and things like that. And then when I heard the uh, Dwayne, Dwayne's version of Trambone, I went out and started buying Chet Atkins records and attempted to copy as much as I could copying his style and so that's why I to this day I play with a thumb pick and my fingers and I'm terrible with a flat pick I'm really not very good but um so uh the, the to me the building blocks of being a good player uh before the songs that you need to know are be in tune, play with a good groove in time, you know, don't rush or drag. You can work with a metronome if you need to. And uh, you need to learn the guitar. And of course, when I was a kid, I didn't know how to play anything in A flat, for example. But uh, eventually Chet Atkins cured that with um, Sophisticated Lady. But uh, in my opinion, if you learn the easier keys first, you know, uh, E, A, D, G, C, etc., uh, you now have some marker points, you know, you know, uh, E is here, there's a, a, another E chord, there's another E chord, here's a bar E chord up here at the 7th fret, and then, 
etc. So you know, C for example. Well, it's on there somewhere. Here, Richard, edit that out. Okay. Um, anyway, so as I progressed as a you know younger teenager, uh, I learned more and more chords, more melodies, and more and more keys. And eventually, you learn the guitar fingerboard pretty well, so that you don't get lost. And another critical thing for me is I'm able to visualize the melodies. Uh, and the uh, licks or the solos for a given key because I can see right in the, the bar chords, mostly bar chords, I can see where those melodies and licks, licks lie. Uh, like for example, you know, there's a big A chord, an A major, and an A major pentatonic is right there. right in there uh, so that's just one little example but as you learn if you learn some jazzy things of course the chords you end up with more chords in a, a given song more uh, complicated solos to to learn but anyway uh, you, you listen to the things you like and um, let's see so maybe I'll, I'll illustrate the difference on, on the trombones uh, the Dwayne Eddy trombone was, uh, I won't use the bigs because it throws the guitar out of tune, is uh, So there's the little, the first eight bars of, of trombone as Dwayne played it. Now many years later, because I, I didn't have the record for a long here's, time, uh, here's uh, Chess version. Uh, See what I'm, I'm showing you is that two versions by two very good guitar players uh, were somewhat different, the chord structure and the melody. So this is where your ear comes in handy. To, um, and, and of course, the building blocks of playing, the, the, the basic building blocks, uh, you know, scales, melodies, licks, chords, uh, etc. Uh, those are just like bricks if you're building a wall you know if they're just a pile of bricks sitting there they don't do you any good so you know there's uh, there's thousands of chords possible to play on the guitar but I don't know them all uh, it, but basically uh, the more songs you learn that's how I learned to play you learn songs and learn to play them accurately and then it, it, here's another example uh, Ain't Misbehavin by Fats Waller uh, the chord structure is a little different than the way Chet played it, uh, uh, but so I had to learn to play the jazz version, you know, with the jazz musicians, and I play the Chet version when I uh, do it on my own. So you, you try to develop your ear, improve your ear. When I was a kid, I didn't know what a diminished chord was. <laughs> for example, there's a, you know, A flat diminished to a, a D7 with an A in the bass. So you see, you learn the chords as you need them to play the song that you're working on at the time. And uh, anyway, that was, uh, that, that's how I still learn to this day is I'll hear something I like and I'll try to learn it as best I can. If it's really complex, you have to break it down, at least I do, uh, in sections. Work on an easy section and get that under your fingers. It's kind of encouragement. But um, so let's see. Maybe uh, I'll, I'll play one last little thing uh, here, a little uh, drive in that Jerry Reed wrote and uh, Chet recorded. Uh, <laughs>
Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> John Knowles, CGP, the great John Knowles to my right. And um, we are going to be teaching. First off, we'll get this uh, straight off. We're going to be teaching at the Rocky Mountain Guitar Camp. That's going to be uh, just outside of Denver. It's Avado, isn't it, I think? Mm -hmm. And it's uh, from August 7th through 11th. That's Rocky Mountain Guitar Camp. And uh, uh, what's the website there? It's, uh, I think I think it's uh, Rocky Mountain Guitar, Guitar Camp. Camp. Dot org. Either dot org, yeah. I think it's yeah. dot org. Yeah, Rocky Mountain Guitar Camp. <coughs> we'll post Camp. that on our... Let's, uh, let's pretend that we're starting over again here. It's just for the recording. <laughs> All right. Um, All so right. We get a clean spot. We're going to get a clean. Okay. All right. We can do that. Real world, take two. Real world take two. We're going live again, folks. My name's Richard Smith. That's uh, the great Pat Bergeson to my left. Hello, everybody. All righty. And the great John Knowles, Professor John Knowles, CGP to my right. Thank you. Dr. John Knowles, that, in that, fact. That, yeah. that in the old days, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. You and my mom always use that, that title, you know. So. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> We're going to be teaching at Rocky Mountain Guitar Camp. That's RockyMountainGuitarCamp.org. That's going to be at Arvada, in Arvada, just outside of Denver, uh, from August the 7th through the 11th. That's coming up in just uh, three or four months. Well, I understand yeah. it's filling up quick. Ooh, uh, it's yeah. great. So I think if you have an, an intention, now's the time to log on and oh, make yeah. the move. RockyMountainGuitarCamp.org. Uh, not just us. It's going to be the wonderful fingerstyle and jazz guitar player Jim Nichols, he's going to be there. Uh, Brooks Robertson, who's a adjunct professor at uh, Berkeley College of Music up in uh, up in Boston, he'll be there. And David Hamburger, wonderful blues ragtime jazz guy, he's going to be there. Six teachers, um, and three four days. You know, that's the thing that's fun about that campus: six teachers and probably between thirty and forty campers, that's which right. means really good, you know, to teacher to student ratio. Plenty oh, of time to, to have some one-on-one -on -one time. You know, well, I and think, have your questions answered and try out some tunes and jam with everybody. I mean, it's a real cozy. Yeah. And the food is, uh, well, I think it's going to be pretty good this year. New that's hotel, good. right? Yeah, oh, that's yeah, right. it's going to be great. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to it being being in, in Arvada. Oh, yeah, great. it's great oh, there. Yeah. We, we were there for the uh, <clears throat> um, Rocky Mountain Arts Top Festival oh, in September yeah. in Arvada, and it was great there. It's nice. The location is great, and it's walking distance from downtown. Oh, at the great. hotel just right up the street, like two blocks away. And, Fantastic. Um, yeah. And it's it's really a great spot. I think it's going to be a good I'm place for the campus it. here. Is there somewhere to get cigars? Oh, yeah, Rich. <laughs> oh, yeah. All righty. <laughs> so what are we going to be teaching? <clears throat> well, I'm going to be teaching uh, improvisation. And I mean, mostly I'll be, I'll be focusing on that. It, you know, I've in my past experiences teaching at the camp, Rocky Mountain Camp, and uh, at the uh, National Guitar Workshop. You know, years ago with John. That's and, right. And David Hamburger was there too, which is great because I'm really looking forward to working, or being with Dave and seeing him oh, and I'll hanging out with him. And yeah. and uh, he's an old buddy. And John and I and Dave started teaching there back in the '80s. Wow. And, I remember uh, the '80s, but I've always taught. I've always taught <laughs> improvisation, and and you know it just seems that a lot of the students who come to the camps, you know, they want to. They, that's one of the things they want to learn about. But they I'll be teaching that, and I'll be teaching you know some basic finger style stuff, and and right. you know jazz, jazz stuff, and. Um, Blues and and uh, Across a lot of board. different things. Yeah, just I'll be teaching a lot of different things. But I'm, that'll yeah. be, but probably focusing more on getting people to, to stretch their boundaries and try to learn how to improvise. Yeah. And, and we've always had fun doing that. So I didn't um, know people were improvising. You know, when I was a kid, I was listening to all these guitar players. I didn't know they were improvising. I just thought that's how that goes. Like, <laughs> I learned that. It's like, uh, yeah, it's like, right, you know, right. I would hear Herb Ellis and, mm -hmm. you know, Barney Kess. And I was like, oh, he learned that. It's like, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah no, no, he was just making that up. Yeah, <laughs> he was making like, it up. He learned it. Yeah. And he, he made it, it up. Yeah. Right. You know, I, 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 I'm looking forward this year. Um, I, I looked at the calendar and. Um, Fifty years ago is when I met Chet Atkins. Wow! So I'm kind of in a celebration mode, and to me, what that means is reviewing first how I learned off of his records, and then later what I learned when I met him and really saw him, and had a chance to ask questions. Right. And I found out that a lot of what I was doing was interesting, but it wasn't what he was doing. Even if we sounded alike, it would be you know a different way to do it. 
And so I'm going to bring some things that he and I worked on together, either arranging or composing, and say, this is how he did it, this is how I did it. And the other thing that's kind of, I guess, the, underneath all of this is what Pat was saying, is that over the years, I've really changed the way I'm playing as I've been around other good players. So I hope everybody who comes to camp walks away with a new commitment to do something different and something better and right. upgrade. Whatever you're doing, get ready to upgrade it, you know, because yeah. if you're hanging around people who have tried things out and learned some things, uh, it's your chance to up your game, you know. So. Yeah, I remember being at a workshop <clears throat> one time. It was a uh, bluegrass festival. Mike Compton, the great mandolin player, was talking about that. Somebody was asking, what do you do, what, you know, the, the point of practice? What do you think about when you're practicing? And he said, have a goal. Yeah. What is it you're working towards? Something that you're trying to get right. And that could be anything. It could be a little technique. could be a way of thinking about improvising. Or it, it could be something getting your little finger moving a little stronger. It could be anything. But having a goal to stretch. You know, that's, I think everybody who comes to camp would be great if they went home with what appears to be four or five small things, yeah. which are, in fact are very big, yeah. like that one. Yeah. You know, if you know how to say, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm not doing it yet. But if I could just get this part and, oh, here it is again in this other tune, that idea, if I develop it, it'll show up in other tunes and, you know, really have a kind of a micro way of practicing that grows into a big way of thinking about your music and your, your plan. So. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely going to be teaching a little thumb picking. <laughs> I'm going to, I mean, that's the one. Well, you're pretty one, good at that, Richard. Well, it's, it's, I've been doing it my whole <laughs> life and trying to figure out how to, how to show other people to do it. You know, when you know how to do something, it's, it's sometimes you've been doing it for so long and it's natural for you, but somebody isn't doing it, it's it's a little more difficult. So I came up with a kind of a method to get people's thumb behaving, as I oh, say. Yeah, behaving thumb, yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing. So the thumb is doing that. I'll play a turn here. Yeah, this yeah, is going to be, yeah, right. I'll, I'll the, this will probably be the uh, the tune I'll, I'll teach the band to play. We will, you know, if there's going to be four or five people in the group, um, in the group that we teach, it'll be like a, um, there's usually three or four bands that play, uh, and they're guitar quartets, trios, quintets, depends how many students there are. We always squeeze uh, people into the band. So uh, you don't want to be necessarily everybody playing finger style guitar. So you've got to come up with parts for everyone to play that gets out of everyone else's way. But I'll, I'll probably teach this tune. And I'll start off thumb picking. We'll go to uh, Japan here by via Kentucky. <laughs>
Sukiyaki. That is the solo <laughs> version of it. <coughs> we'll uh, we'll make that happen for a band. Mm -hmm. So there'll be people yeah. maybe playing. Yeah, parts. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing, you know. And you kind of invent parts. We'll invent parts as as we go along. But yeah, that's Sukiyaki. I'll be teaching that. You know what you're going to be teaching? I, I do. One band? of the things I'm going to do for the band is. Uh, do Chet's tune trombone. Yeah. And uh, the thing that drew me to that tune was several things. One is he recorded it over 20 or 30 years, lots of different ways. Yeah. And then when I was doing my fingerstyle quarterly, he said, why don't we show your guys how to play trombone? And we didn't have whammy bars, right? Yeah. So he showed me other things to do besides bong, you know. Yeah. And one, of course, is the obvious. And, but yeah. then all. And then um, the other thing that I like about that tune is um, the chord progression is good for doing lots of things with. Because mm -hmm. it. it uh, it's almost blue moon, you know. One, six, two, five. It's, yeah. yeah right. And so uh, that means if there's some improvisers in your band, you know, and if there's not the chords, yep. and even the chords with a good thumb. So you have a chance to work your thumb without getting your fingers right. too involved right. you know and um, and I think I have to go back and look through my cassettes I have I think the cassette that Chet recorded in the office when he said here's some other ways to play trombone okay. so you yeah. see him think through other things to do with that tune then when you get to the bridge so it's again a kind of a bread and butter right. progression that One, people are comfortable to do five. five. Yeah. And then back to C. And this little part. <laughs> He had that. Cool. Yeah. And he Chet that said company. he got that from Floyd Kramer. Really? <laughs> and yeah. that, that little move, you know. Yeah, I can and see. And then he it. also, in the early days, he did. Yeah. At, around through that same thing. So there's lots of ways, or, or uh, you could do. Uh, Whatever, yeah. you know. So I haven't I haven't figured out exactly what all you could do with it, but I'll have some things written out so that you can Great. study it in advance. People can come to camp somewhat prepared, you know. Fantastic. But still ready to be stunned by <laughs> what it's like to really be doing it at right. at high altitude, you know. <laughs> this is the Rocky Mountain Guitar Camp we're all going to be teaching at. Myself, John Knowles, uh, <clears> Pat <throat> Bergeson, Jim Nichols, Brooks Robertson, and uh, David Hamburger, we're all going to be there in Arvada, just outside of Denver, Colorado, from August 7th through 11th. Uh, and that, We're going to be there, Rocky Mountain Guitar Camp, teaching all kinds of stuff. Pat, improvising. Um, do you want to give a, a, a very quick um, truncated version of what you'll be teaching? What, what I'll be teaching? As, yeah, as far as improvisation and the Well, I'll the be method. teaching, you know, I, I like I, what I've done most of the time is, is to try to get people to, to learn how to play you know, to be able to solo over a, some a type of basic form. Mm -hmm, Sometimes right. we even work on just tr learning, getting people to impro improvise over a blues over change, blues chord changes, or <laughs> you know, a simple standard. You know, or even just over one chord. Right. You know, like pl play like some type of you know groove or a vamp or something. Should we do people that? To, yeah, and then just trying to get people yeah. to even just play f play phrases. You know, yeah. just to play a. You know, the, I think a lot of students who are beginning at it, you know, they may they may be able to play, you know, tunes on the guitar, but they spend a lot of time just playing, you know, the arrangements that they learn, and right. so they never right. really get outside the box of that. So just trying to get them, you know, to, mm -hmm. to be able to sit in with a band and have fun and yeah. listen to what people are doing yeah, and react or just to that. Just even right? get dip in their toe in the yeah. water, you know, to get to get an idea of how to to. Uh, to just even know where to begin, you know. Right. So a lot of times I'll just give people exercises of like, okay, you know, play a four-bar phrase or play a two-bar phrase, right? And stop, you know. A lot of people just 
talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and go. You go and go. And <laughs> fingers keep, I've keep been there. Yeah, fingers yeah. just keep going and yeah. they never the take train, a breath. The train's got too much momentum. Take a breath. Yeah, and right, it's, right. you know, it's, yeah. it's difficult for people yeah. to do what, you know, at yeah. first. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, so just getting people to do, to do that. You know, and, but we, to have fun at, with it at the same time. Should we try a quick blues and A, maybe? Thing. Yeah. Blues and A. A blues and A? Just, okay, yeah, sure. Just, Here we go. Yeah. Just give it All right, I'll play. I'll tell you what. I'll play a blues in there, but I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play. Let's see. Um, you know, or here's the, the example of, you know, um, you know, playing a phrase, two, the two first verses the same, two first okay. phrases the same. 12 bar blues having three for four bar phrases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First, first two are the same. The third one different. Just as like as a person would sing, you know, okay. a, a blues lyric. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, or it's the same the first two times, <clears throat> and then the third one's different. Okay, I'll just, one, I'll just, I'll two, improvise something. One, two, three. the first two the That's same. Right. Even a cowboy can do that. Second time. Da, dee, yeah. dee, dee. That's the other thing you learn to do is actually pay attention to what you played. Yeah. So you're listening to yourself That's as well as the point. Exactly, yeah. John. Yeah, just just trying to hear what you're you're playing because people don't really connect with right. the notes that they're playing. You right? Yeah. I mean yeah. people don't connect oh, yeah, with yeah. it. They just yeah. it's the fingers go here. Um, and I think it's, you know, other instruments, there's a little more of a an instant connection. Like with wind instruments, I would think would be more like that. Right. Yeah. To be able to, you know, you're not just holding down a key and your lips are vibrating. I yeah, mean, there's right. more of a connection with your body and your yeah. brain, the, I think. But with the guitar, mm -hmm. it's like... Well, we and piano this... even. Like you put a finger down and, and a note plays. And yeah. Same thing with the guitar... You know, being able to, you know, try to get your students to, like, pay attention to how, you know, the dynamics of how they pick, you know, or how they pick a note with their fingers. You know, to have all the little subtleties of, you know, the, of the articulation with the tips of your fingers, if it's a nail or if it's just all skin, you know, or how you just, uh, what well, A lot of that, touch, I think, comes you know, to, if you, if you sing... What you're playing, and everybody thinks it's like like a George Benson thing or something. You know? Right. But really, that singing while you play is your connection to your breath, and your 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 breathing, your heartbeat coming into your fingers. You know, you're trying to. So do 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 do. If you die, that's easy to do. Die now, you know to play that note louder because you just you sang it louder. You know. Yeah. <laughs> right. But, but you can even you know like do this, play the same thing again. And I'm gonna even simplify it more. Like mm -hmm. like I'll give students like here's. You know, you have four notes. Use uh -huh. these four notes and still do the same thing. Okay. Play a phrase. Like, say, if I played the four, these four notes of the pentatonic scale. The minor pentatonic. Yeah. Let's just say, just do that. Okay, okay. now I'm going to use those four notes and play, try to do the same kind of phrasing you were just, okay. you were just doing. Okay, uh, go ahead. A one, two, three, four. But of course, it's the rhythm, you know, the groove of the melody and everything being in the, you know, and also the notes you play, you know, the melody is also in the rhythm section. 
right? Right. The rhythm uh-huh. section isn't here you're playing and then you're the melody, you know, or you're the soloist. The soloist is part of the rhythm section, meaning that what you play rhythmically mm-hmm. has to be in the groove with everybody else. You know, those kind right. of things are the kind of things. Yeah, that's Try right. to get everybody to do I think I may learn a thing or two. I'll go to camp. But, <laughs> have, <laughs> but, have, <laughs> but have fun while we're doing it. Yeah, that's exactly. always the point. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know, guitar camp <clears throat> I mean, that's really, it's, you know, it's, yeah. it's not college. Yeah, it's got to it be, yeah, be fun. It's got to be fun. It's got to be fun. You know, yeah, yeah. college I mean, can be fun yeah. too. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And you know, but I mean, <laughs> most of the work you'll be doing will be during the the next two years after you've done it, or however long. You know, I mean, you, you do all the work. You're not going to exp- you, you'll learn something at the camp. You'll learn a lot of things at the camp, but then you actually work on them and really get them in the gray matter over the next several months or years. Um, that's really the point, but you know, yeah. you can, it's about learning how to learn and you really learn it and absorb it over time. Um, and all the hard work and practice is done after the camp. Um, but yeah. this is the Rocky Mountain Guitar Camp. We're talking about folks who are just tuning in Rocky Mountain Guitar Camp, August 7th through 11th. That is uh, going to be in Arvada, just outside of Denver, Colorado, um, hosted by Mike and Pam Harrington. Yeah, and there's going to be uh, probably some students there who've been there before, right, yeah. this year, which yeah. is, it's always been a really fun mm-hmm. group of people. Well, if you and, go to that uh, website and you're under 21 years old, you should click on the part about scholarships. Oh, yeah. Because one of the things we do while we're there is we put on some concerts and people put in the tip jar for the scholarship fund. So yeah. you can, if you're a young person, uh, there's a way to get there on on the big nickel. You know, Is it so, 21 and under? 21 and under. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Good to know that. John? You- yeah, you know, I'm thinking of several things. Um, one of the things I think I may do, just because it would be fun to do, is um, <clears throat> when I was first, I had met Chet, and I was still in Texas, so I was sending him stuff on cassettes, and he was recording it, so I wasn't seeing what he was doing, you know. So uh, our son Jay, I guess, was maybe four, five, okay. something like that. And he said, Dad, if you're doing all that movie music for Chet, he says, why don't you do the Bugs Bunny music? Uh-huh. So he went and put the cassette player in front of the TV and waited for the cartoons to come on. <laughs> that was the MP3 of his day, you know. Right, right, right. <laughs> and uh, recorded the Saturday morning cartoons, and I figured out how to play. Then I was still kind of a classical guitar player who had abandoned his thumb pick, you know. Right. So I sent that to Chet, and when he recorded it, it, it came like this. Right. It sounded much more like Chet. I sounded right. like the cartoons. Right. He right. sounded like Chet Atkins, you know. So when we finally got together and, and talked about, and of course that's the same notes, he just dropped that an octave. So I saw how my way of kind of literally trying to transcribe like a classical player would. Right. And then Chet's way of sounding like Chet Atkins. Well, know. let's make it sound like me and put yeah. my own stamp So it, it was right, fun right. to watch the, what uh, an arrangement at that point, I realized, could be a sketch of what to do. So I've got, uh, anyhow, I've got that one all written out, and we'll teach everybody how to play. So you can use that at the end of your set to maybe say, yeah. now's the time to head for the tip jar, folks. Do, 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 for sure. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll have a bunch of... Um, a bunch of tabs and music, uh, in, in notation and music, all kinds of exercises. <coughs> I'll certainly be teaching some some Jerry Reed kind of material. Um, that's something I've studied my whole life. Um, you know, there were different aspects of Jerry. He was kind of a like for me. He was a mixture of of Chet and Merle Travis and Earl Scruggs and Ray Charles. Yes, those, yes, those were because yeah. he had the Ray <laughs> Charles thing like. Yeah. And, kind of Ray Charles kind of thing, the down home. And then there was obviously the, the Chet and Merle thing. Baby's coming home. And that was obvious. And then there's like a...
which is more kind of like Earl Scruggs' banjo. So right. he was getting all these different techniques yeah. and influences. So I will be going through, uh, I'll be going through those. <coughs> and uh, anyone that wants to know any of that stuff, Brooks Robertson also, um, he, he knows their stuff inside out. Oh, yeah, he's, he's teaching that. Yeah. 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 yeah, he's got oh, it. Him and Dave and Jim are all and then, great. Yeah, Dave, same way. Both Brooks and Dave, too, really have gone through uh, learning lots of stuff that's not necessarily part of their core business right now. Right. But they, so they have a really broad range right. of yeah. things they've tried to learn how to do. So if you bring something and show it to any one of us, one of us is going to have tried, is going to have solved that problem. Right. Yeah, I rarely see somebody screw up in a way I haven't personally screwed up. Well, I <laughs> right. I've right. stepped in all the same potholes. You know? right. <laughs> Pat, yeah. you want to play a tune? Yeah, let's play that one. Yeah. <clears throat> Which one? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. 
lifted yeah. you guys. Of course, everybody's out there looking. John's got his eyes. Was he falling asleep? No. I'm closing my eyes to concentrate on what I hear instead of what I see. And that's people ask me all the time, and I'm turning my ears on by shutting my eyes down and all like that. So now I'm not used to playing that tune, but I hear you start here and go up the scale uh, and skip a note. So I kind of know my way around, so I can play that tune because I recognize the territory. Right. So and I know uh, Brooks has done that some too because he's taking the music theory classes. I didn't do it by taking theory classes. I did it by poking around until I found. And then later on, I learned the names of things. But I, I really want to get everybody to take in what they know now and put it to work, so that there's a more complete toolkit for learning right. tunes. And also, if you can hear what Pat's doing and play a little bit of that, it means you can hear your own musical imagination and play what your imagination is telling you to play. And that makes you a good improviser, not just playing the scales and the chords and the licks you know, but listening to do 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 And you'll find those notes uh, under your fingers like that. And when people see you do that, those who can't do it think it's magic. Or they say, you're so talented. You know, I remember one time uh, Ralph Emery told Chet, he said, oh, Chet, you make it look so easy. And Chet says, well, it didn't used to be. <laughs> and, and that's how it is. I didn't used to be able to do this. I, you didn't used to be able to do this. Yeah, right. We weren't born with frets under our fingers, you know. You just make these discoveries. <clears throat> we these we learned how to, we discover things. And little by little, we say, oh, this discovery and that discovery. And also that means in this key and in that tune, this same thing. So you yeah. piece together uh, a kind of a fabric of how music works, how I play it. And then you start listening to other people, and they influence what you're doing. Right. And I think I'd like to see everybody go home from camp, as it were. So what did you do at camp? And they would start to talk, and they would say, oh, never mind, because it's too hard to explain to somebody right. who wasn't at camp. Yeah, and <laughs> really. Yeah, and everybody comes for a different reason, too. Yeah. You know, everybody who shows up at the camp, they're all there for different reasons. Some That's of, it. Some guys are, like, already for, pretty far along, very far right. along in their abilities and some, yeah. yeah, and some yeah. guys were professionals, yeah, and so they're, you know, they everybody, and then there's people who are very, you know, beginner, you know, or not complete beginners, yeah. but, you know, so it's, everybody's got a different um, path, and all, and everybody gets to that point you're talking about in their own way, Yes, everybody, right. and there's no tried and true no method, you know, you, I mean, certainly the one tried and true thing is, is time with your yeah. instrument. Yeah. Yeah. The more time you spend with your instrument, the more you improve, period. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Time and goals. That's it. What yeah. Richard was saying. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. time and goals, that's yeah. it. And so no, no matter what level you're at, it's still always that. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so. Also not giving up. And not yeah. giving up. It's and like trying yeah. to have fun. Like I right. keep saying, trying right. to have fun. Yeah. Like it gets, you know, there's those periods of like frustration where you're like, oh. You're just oh, ticked sure. off because you want to get right. this one lick, yeah. and then you just work your way through it until right. you get to it, and you just keep going and going and be mm -hmm. determined to get there somehow. It's but, like, my, yeah. well, they say Rome was not built in a day. You will get this stuff. You can't just say, oh, I can't do that. I'm not good enough. It's like, well, not yet. You yeah. you can get there. There's a method, and doing it slowly is the real method. Do everything that you can do. Think about it as in, you know, 16 <laughs> frames a second movie. Yeah, and focus on what the real problem is. Take that frame and and, and yes. say, what's the real? Pro this is zoom in and find out what your problem is. If you work on that really slowly, don't even try playing what you can't play. Try learning it and forcing your fingers to go there. And eventually, just just like uh, clay, you, you will mold your fingers into behaving. <laughs> That's really true. You know, I remember one time because uh, for a while. Uh, Fret's magazine was having the monthly article with Chet. And so what we'd do is we'd sit in the office and Chet would talk and play and I'd write down what he did and then transcribe it and send it off to Fret. And so one of them was Fret's asked all the readers to ask Chet questions. Yeah. And so one of the questions was, how do you make yourself practice? So I read the question and Chet said, is that a real question? Yeah. And I said, yeah, that's really a question. Well, I guess I better answer it then. And he thought a second, he said, well, just say it helps if you love it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what it is. You have to be so true. on this. Yeah. You sit in the chair and you say, I'm in the chair doing what I love. Yeah. It's already a success. Now, if I gain some ground, 
that's even better, you right. know. So. Yeah, right. and and that's the key, isn't it? it yeah. is, and that's what brings people to guitar camp, yeah. right? They there love it is. playing the guitar, we all they love it. writing songs, and they want to perform them, which <clears> is another cool thing about the camp is the open mic. Yes. You know, that's what the yeah. very cool thing about it is every night there's an open mic, and so people who are songwriters can come and try out their new tunes, yeah. and, you know, guitar players, you know, hey, I've been writing a song, you know, I want to perform it for somebody. And it's a really great environment because people get to, you know, really like step in there and like, and, you know, most people are scared when they go to play their uh, new right. tunes, including us. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, we all get so nervous. it's, yeah. you know, it's a yeah. good place to go fall on your face or, you know, and, you yeah. know, get encouragement and, you know, just to, you know, some people have ne come to the camp and have never done that. And right. then they do it the first time, and they're like, oh, man, this is the coolest that was so thing cool. I ever did, you know, yeah. and they want to keep doing it, you know. Right. So, I mean, right. even that one thing, <clears throat> you know, I've had students say, you know, they've, they've, like, walked away with, like, one little thing, and they said it was worth the price of admission, you know, even just, like, performing one of their songs for the first right. time. Or it could right. be, you know, you know, learning a new lick or, you know, getting a start on a new song or whatever. This is the Rocky Mountain Guitar Camp, folks, uh, August 7th through 11th in Arvada, just outside of Denver, Colorado. Uh, we're going to be there with Brooks Robertson, Jim Nichols, and David Hamburger, uh, Pat Bergeson to my left, John Knowles to my right. Um, you guys want to play another tune? Or is, is there anything that you want to think I may do while I'm... I'm going to bring a tune with me that it had a lot of stuff in it that I realized shows up in other <clears> tunes <throat> I've been playing. So when you tune the sixth string down and you're playing kind of in the key of D, usually, you're not always, but. And you know, that's where Strutton lives. Oh, yeah. All, all kind of tunes that we're all used to playing, you know. Right. And so what happens is you've got uh, some unusual positions because it's a sixth string, but you've also going to have to cover the neck. And, um, and I remember when Lenny first came to Nashville and he was playing. Tonic, but also, okay. and okay. <laughs> yeah. playing, harmonizing the pentatonic scale with no chords that aren't don't, they don't sound like triads. They've got fourths and seconds. Right, you know? right. And so when I did that one day, I realized that was um, the the way you hear a lot of uh, Chinese pentatonic stuff happen that way. Uh -huh. And here's where I discovered something. If you're going to be here, and you want to be here, you think your hand has moved four or five frets up the neck. Right. Well, if you if you do it right, what happens is you get your thumb like along in here somewhere, right. and then it's time to move, and your thumb sits still. Your right. hand doesn't shift. You right. pivot. Right. Yeah. And so now, if you need to be up here, what you've got is uh -huh. you're here. You pivot to here. You shift to here, and you pivot to here. Right. So you've got one shift and two pivots to cover the whole neck. Now, I do that with my thumb behind the neck. Uh -huh. I've seen Tommy do the same thing with his thumb over the neck because uh -huh. he plays that way, you know. Yep. But uh -huh. it's that same thing, and you're, what you're doing is we're used to thinking of our fingers here hanging on to the common finger and using that finger to guide you through the next one. Right. But I use my thumb that same way. I use my thumb... Uh -huh. To guide me from one chord to another, it makes you feel like you're not floating around. You're not. You're not. You're not yeah. constantly jumping off and hoping you'll land in the right place. That's right. interesting. You're really in one place. About the, you know, having the position of your thumb. And you're probably yeah. doing that subconsciously. Probably, yeah. yeah. Just probably. Something that just so this this out. tune, and I'll, I'll tell you, when I first wrote it, I wrote it like this: shift, 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 yeah. shift, shift, shift. And so it, I never sounded good. It didn't ever sound. Dee -da. Right. Da, 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 which is what I wanted, right. so I quit playing it. <laughs> and then I figured out, oh, wait a minute, I'm playing it wrong. Right. And then it would... Yeah. Now, there was a shift in it before. Now, no shift yet. That was all pivot. So... Here's finally a shift. One more shift. Now, there's only three shifts instead of 11 shifts. Uh, right. So you and and you sing. Da, well, it sounds smoother. Feels smoother. And you you it's like singing, you know. Uh -huh. And then I look back and the, look at this. The entertainer. Yeah. It, it's again a pivot moment. 
instead of yes. shift, 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 shift. Right, you know, right. And it sounds like the entertainer's about to trip otherwise, you know, right, or choke. Right. right. And, uh, uh, and strutting. <laughs> shift, pivot. Right. So I found those little places where if I went in, and this is all tunes that I already knew how to play. Uh-huh. So during the pandemic, I brought the pivot back into the picture and smoothed out a lot of my plan. And what happens is, like I say, it gets smoother. It also reminds you that you're not through refining and polishing and taking on board new ideas. Right. And I think a lot of times I hear people say, well, you know, I'm this old and that old. And everybody who tells me that, I'm older than them. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. <know? laughs> and, and then, but also, if you hang around, there are a lot of kids, so you'll hang around youth ideas, you'll get right. youth energy. Right. And old, being old is like really about having experience. And wisdom. You have right. to be, get wisdom only comes if with some years, you know. Right. So I think that whole idea of like refining and making more elegant, you know, what you're playing. Uh, and for me, it comes from first learning by ear, Chet's stuff with a thumb pick, then taking classic guitar lessons for a while, right. and then meeting Chet. So what I do now is a, is a soup of all that stuff, and I've watched lots of people solve problems and become musical and I think you know. that's just learning a few classical guitar pieces helped me uh, get out of the the ca the caged system can be very handy I think when you're learning when you're improvising because it gives you landmarks and places right. to land but also can box you in when you're when you're thinking about playing um, solo finger style pieces it's nice to be able to take voices, you know, something like... Now, I'm not thinking in chord shapes, although some of them happen to land on chord shapes. That's right. You know, and those, you know, some Jerry Reed tunes. thinking about chord shapes when I'm playing that's that. Right. Think about where, where each finger it? has to be right. to get to the next place. Exactly. And that's Film frames, like you said, you know, yeah. it's a movie and each frame is, has something going for it. And um, I think having learned the Chet Atkins and Merle Travis approach with a groove on the thumb and studying some of the classical, that that's really handy for learning the Joplin rags, which kind of oh. bring a little of both into it. Yes, uh, that's learning, right. Yeah. Um, because you've got some of those fingerings which are unorthodox, which you wouldn't usually make. You're having to really force those fingerings, but there's a certain right-hand groove to the ragtime that, that um, having played the, the um, finger-picking style really Sets helps. Sets you up. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I think what I'm going to do is identify maybe four or five, some spots in the entertainer, something in Strutton, where this shift-pivot idea happens. Yeah. So there's a way to kind of learn how to do that skill and then take it and look through your own repertoire and see where you could smooth out your flying up and down the neck. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. I was learning one of your songs <laughs> while I was in Florida, John. I, it was one that you had played several times, and I, it always caught my ear. And I just... Uh, turning Home. Oh, Turning Home, yeah. And I just... It, it's got this kind of... Uh, it's, you were saying it's, it's like a ship turning around, and it's got this kind of... Uh, rolling uh, rolling ocean waves, yeah. Good to hear somebody else play your tunes, <laughs> especially him. <laughs> and it's got this rolling yeah. thing, and I was working about, I was thinking about that. And one of the things that's tough, there are there are a few things where your pinky really has to be strong. And I like, You got a line that is three notes long. Can we get to hear your Mickey has to hang on for right. three notes right. while everybody else gets busy? Right. It's yeah. It's that's a nasty <laughs> one, and that has to. And I was actually explaining about using your body as a fulcrum can help. Uh, and Kirk Sand said he'd n he'd never heard that before. Using your body as a fulcrum so that you're not squeezing for all you're worth with oh, your yeah. thumb. So I can even play a little bit without my thumb so that 
I'm not squeezing and getting really tired with this hand. That kind of that's something I've, I've worked on for certain chord positions like oh, that. I know. Yeah. yeah. So you're not wearing your thumb out. Yeah. Your thumb so you can there. go like, like. So most of the pressure. I mean, this helps. You have to. You have to put your thumb there to to get it clean but mm -hmm. still thinking most your thumb the, is a balancing thing not as a squeezing right. thing so it's so you're not squeezing putting all of your energy here mm -hmm. you know the other thing that happens when you think that way is uh in between moves your thumb is always ready to relax until it's needed again yeah, you don't have like a constant stranglehold on the neck, right? And so then, when you let go of and ready to move to the next chord, one of the things that happens is you chirp less, because <laughs> chirping comes from not letting go of the effort. Right. So yeah. you know yeah. it means that your release is just as important as your squeeze. You yeah. yeah, yeah. In order to get that to happen, I so found that. it's yeah. it's not that you set out to quit squeaking. It's Everybody's mm. I, it's interesting on Facebook. Oh, that's part of how you sound. Right. What well, is if you haven't straightened some stuff out, you know? Right. It's right. just like, can you imagine every singer saying, breathing is part of how you sing, therefore, huh, yesterday, you know, come on. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. I found that yeah. with, uh, actually, with Yezu. Yes. There's, there's a lot of thumb squeezing. There's a certain section where you're squeezing with everything. I get to relax a little bit and shake my hand you know it's, there's there's yeah. certain parts where this is just squeezing too much mm -hmm. so yeah. um so yeah, that so, bar chord thing yeah it's yeah. the bar yeah. chords or whatever just for long periods of time or you know kind of in that sort of hand position it, mm -hmm. it'll do a number you know that's one of those things too we were talking one of the first things richard said was about finding some little something like a goal and zeroing in on it to me if i've learned a new piece there's almost some place in it that's not working quite right and very often the thing that's not working right has a squeak in it as well right so i find that if i can work to eliminate the squeak very often i've eliminated arriving departing everything else that it means there's something going on where i'm i've got a stranglehold on the guitar instead of a yeah a right. the, the work that's necessary there's something that's not not relaxed i'm finding if i'm if I'm relaxed, it means I've got it right. If yeah. I'm not relaxed, it means there's something my hands aren't happy about yet. Yeah. So I think that's the yeah. Um, yeah um, and I think that just comes through repeating it and doing it again, working with the metronome. And, and I've seen people work with the metronome where they'll they'll just put the metronome on and play a song from start to finish. And I'm thinking that's not what you're supposed no. to be doing. Yeah. There's usually a phrase or two that you're not happy with. And so you slow that metronome right down and then get that phrase on that so that it becomes more in control. That's yeah. something I'm constantly working on if there's something that is getting a little head or behind. And I always feel if I've played with the metronome just before, there's a certain feel in your brain and your hands that that is that much better. Yeah, and a real good thing to do is like, is find the comfortable tempo that you want to play it at. You know, work on it a little bit like that, and then you know, of course, then that it exposes your weak spots. Then yeah. slow it down. Yeah. And keep slowing it down. Right. Like slow it down some more, and then when you're thinking, oh, okay, I've got it, then don't do it yet. Slow down more. One more. Yeah. Slowing you know, it down. Force like, yourself or you're really to do easing it into slow. It. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, but at the same time, playing it slow, make it say even if it's something that's a swing feel or something. Yes. You know, or yeah. like you know a funk groove or whatever it is that you're any kind of rhythmic feel that you're doing or a Latin right. thing or whatever. You know, slow it down even more, but still make it yeah. groove. Right. You know, and so make your feel be like like in I, the I, pocket yeah. at the same time you're you're slowing it down. Boy, I tell you, that's the hardest. Yeah. But once you get it, yeah. You know, because oh, that's the, the the it's always the tendency is to rush. Most oh, yeah. people rush. Some people yeah, drag. I yeah, I do. It's Some people drag, limit. but yeah, it yeah. seems like to me that it's you know seventy five twenty five on people rushing. That's yeah. drag. I think sometimes we rush yep, because yep. we're worried. Yeah. yeah, we'd like if I can just get this over with. Yeah, right. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I feel. It's like, yeah, just get this. <laughs> that's over right. With. Exactly, that's John. Exactly. And I'm a guilty yeah. of that. Exactly. Oh, I, it's like I, me you know, too. it's like hey, you know, you know that. Right. You know, yeah. Instead, oh, this is a race. My favorite yeah. part. <laughs> and it's fun. I find that yeah. going 
slowing it down, like you were just talking about, slowing it down even more. It's speeding it up isn't like going up a weight at the That's gym. That's easy. Slowing it yeah. down is like going up a weight at the gym. That's yes. right. It's, exactly. It's, like the speeding yeah. it up. That's the easy yeah. part. That's right. the part you have in the problem right. with in the first place. That is like <laughs> going. That's like going uh, zooming out. Mm -hmm. Instead of zooming in and seeing what the problem is, yeah, I there was. The, I read something online. You guys probably read this, and I've told this story before about this experiment that was done with some uh, piano players. I believe it was piano players. Yeah. The whole point of the experiment was they took these, like, say, six piano players. They 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 put them in a practice room. They put a camera in every room, and they gave all of them the exact same piece. They were all equally, you know, all these. Players were all about the equal level and mm -hmm. skill, and they put them in the room with a camera, gave them the same piece of music, and they gave them like, I don't know, an hour or something to work on this piece. And, that, and then at the end of the piece, they were going to have to, after the end of the hour, they were going to have to perform the piece. And they then they observed each person's performance, and then they came to the conclusion that every single person would might have a, a you know a section of the tune where they might have made a mistake or screwed up right. and then they went back and looked at the film and they watched that anybody the people who had did the best performances were the ones who took those little bits like these difficult passages mm -hmm. and i think the piece they gave everybody had this one spot it yeah, was really it's difficult. Gonna be hard yeah. that was like I'd you know notoriously <laughs> different i mean yeah. difficult for everybody mm -hmm. right. the same spot and so you know, a lot of people, some of the guys screwed up and some of the guys just nailed it. And the right. guys who nailed the part were the ones who took the, working with the metronome, mm -hmm. who right. slowed it down and played right. it over and over repetitively, right. slower, at a slower For tempo. 15 minutes. And then the sped it up, yeah. you know. Right. But the other people who screwed it up, they just kind of skated over it, you know, right. just kind of like, yeah, okay, I got that, you know. And they went out and played it, screwed it up. <laughs> right. So, you know, it was, it was, it was a neat experiment because it kind of showed yet that you know that that's is really practicing. the key yeah. you know that's really the key you know there's a thing like that i've always said which is uh you know what's the one thing in this tune you're working on that if you fixed it would make the biggest improvement that's kind of i'd find in a pothole for yourself right you know? right and if you can fix that very often what you find is two bars before that part you could hear your anxiety crank right. up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you know that part was coming. Classic mistakes. Oh, you know, yeah. I, I and then it. you get out of it, and you're busy congratulating yourself. Mm -hmm. So you still, so the, the groove is messed up, the mistake, the groove is still messed up. Yeah. So what, this big a mistake has that big a presence in your performance. Right, you know? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right. And, it's, and, and even if you, like, say you get it one time, you're like, oh, okay, you know. I, <laughs> no, you, no. You might nail it one time, and then you're like, you're like, yeah, yeah okay, okay. Yeah, it's like, you know, and then like, you go to the gig, yeah. and you're like, God, that one part was really hard. I played it right that one time. Yeah, just because you can hit <laughs> the bullseye do once doesn't mean you're going to hit it every time. <laughs> exactly. yeah. You know, the right. other thing I've done is as soon as I get something like that and I've resolved it, you know, slow, polish, get it back up a little bit, and I put the guitar away, later that day I will sing to myself what I did without my guitar in my hand and make a little movie in my head of me successfully navigating that. That's so really I'm, I'm good. essentially polishing the memory of doing it well. Yeah. You know. That's a great point, John. That's really, really good. Because we're all thinking about what we do all the time, to practice. Right? Yeah. It's yeah. a great way to practice. I practice like that all yeah. the time. Of course, I annoy the hell out of people sometimes. That's right. You know. Makes me <laughs> dangerous <laughs> on the freeway sometimes, you know, because I'm... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like, go, just uh, uh, rehearsing it in your head. I mean, yeah. I've actually played uh, played gigs and done a pretty good job mm -hmm. when somebody would just give me the recording, and if I didn't, like, they said, hey... You know, can you play with me tonight at so and so? And I'm like, mm -hmm. ah, you know, of course, if it's not in, you know, ten yeah. songs or whatever, but can you do like a couple of songs with me tonight? Right. You know, and they'll give me a chart, and, right. uh, or not even a chart, just a recording. Yeah. And right. and I can actually do the exact same thing you're talking about. You know, of course, ahead. depending on how, if it's yeah. the, the the level of, mm -hmm. but, you know, if it's something, you know, I could just rehearse it in my mind mm -hmm. and go there and bang, you know, right. and be able to play it, you know, and right. But the actual going through it step by step in your head, like you're saying, John, like and seeing see, it on doing the fretboard and what you would play. We've been doing this. Yeah. You know, that we put just as much years and effort into being clear about what we're doing as the facility to be right. able to do it. Yeah. Right. What you're doing, and then work work on it <coughs> are, are, are two different things. Yes. Basically, you got to figure out what you're trying to do, and then 
make your fingers doing it. Um, yeah. Um, there was oh, always at, at workshops. Um, the Deer Hunter? Yes. You know that? Oh, man. There's yeah. this great piece of music. Well, there's a particular section <clears throat> where John Williams did this. And I wanted this extra bass note in here. I wanted this. So, but to get this to be smooth, here's the arpeggio. But to play the melody and the arpeggio, you've got to slide that up. It's nasty. So the first thing I did was I went, I practiced this from here to here, these two to these two. And I did that till I had that. And then I went, then I did. Then I went. So basically I was, what they call widening the practice loop. So I've got the spot, the actual spot, the actual frame of the movie that is the problem spot. Then I just slow it down. And just keep doing it until you get it. My wife, a cellist, said her her, um, her cello teacher said, play something 20 times in a row. To, you can play it 20 times perfectly. If you mess it up on the 20th time, oh, you, yeah. go, you go back to number one. And that will force you. you don't, you're not practicing just for the sake of practice. You're practicing because you want to get it right. So that will force you to slow down. Because you don't necessarily want to go back to number one just for the sake of it. You'll slow it down and make, make sure that your muscles are doing the right thing because at this point you're not playing music you're just training your muscles then it becomes music a little later that's a nasty that's little a move goal, yeah. Yeah. i tell you what's really fun oh, yeah, yeah. from over here is yeah. i heard the phrase get more and more musical within about a, a two minute that th you just did that the first time you did it it was kind of you know, yeah. a rough landing. Right. But about the third or fourth time, it started right. to do this. No, it's and now all of a sudden, dee, da, da, da. Right. You know, this way. It starts to become... You could, yeah, yeah you could hear the, the, the result of that. In, yeah. in this case, it, you've already practiced that, but now what you're doing is you're you're warming up to what you did when you yeah. practiced, and I could hear it. You're, you're you know, fine-tuning yeah. it. And yeah. You're putting the, um, yeah, you're putting the maple syrup in the finishing pot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, another one I do... After I got to where I could play strutting, and you'd have these things, and now part of what's going on there, you have to get your pinky, yeah. to where, and I have to, to me, I have to move my pinky over, you do that, right. I don't have a big pinky, I have, I have to put the sweet spot where it needs to be, Okay. you know, yeah. and I would do, 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 do. Now I'm not using my fingers, but I'm putting my musical brain right where right. my fingers need to be. Right where the time is. And then what I'm gonna do is little by little synchronize those two and then at some point quit singing. Sometimes when I do uh, a duet with uh Tommy, every now and then I'll just quit and then come back in, and I never know where I'm gonna come back in. <laughs> and I, if you'd have ever told me I could quit in the middle of strutting and come back in in the right place, I'd, I'd have said, no way, Jose. <laughs> right. But I've done that so many times, I could do. Right. I, can I know what I'm doing at each place, uh -huh. and when I'm singing, I know where my fingers would be if they were playing. Uh -huh. now, so it's it's one of those things where you, you want to inform yourself, um, and even if it's a simple tune, same thing, you know. It's uh, You want to be so clear about what you're doing 
that a little falter won't just throw you off the cliff. Right. You know, there's a way to come back in. You know. Folks, we're going to be teaching at Rocky Mountain Guitar Camp. <clears throat> that is going to be August 7th through 11th. We're going to be discussing all this stuff, going into further detail and helping you improve, stretch your playing, uh, train your muscles and uh, train your ear every uh, last bit of technique that you can be doing on the guitar, particularly with finger style and improvisation. Uh, there's going to be myself, Pat Bergeson here, and John Knowles, Jim Nichols, uh, Brooks Robertson and David Hamburger. We're all going to be there August 7th through 11th in Arvada, just outside of Denver, Colorado. Um, RockyMountainGuitarCamp.org is the website. Sign up. I think there's a few oh, spots man. left. I'm going to go home and pack my bag. I can't stand it. Yeah. yeah. I've got to book my flights yet. <laughs> yeah, I know. Me too. Yeah. I need to figure That's that going to be in Denver. So if you, are, if you are coming in from out of town, Take a few other days in the in the um, in Rocky Mountain uh, National Park. Check out some of the mountains in Denver if you've not been there before. Oh, yeah. um, make a thing of it. <clears throat> Go off roading or something, but uh, don't do yourself a mischief. <laughs> don't injure yourself. See you there, right? With. Yeah, right. <laughs> RockyMountainGuitarCamp.org. Uh, Dr. John Knowles, Pat Bergeson. Um, you want to finish off with a song, guys? Sure. Um. Maybe uh, Love a Come Back or something? You know that one? Yeah, we'll I was see. thinking about that. Yeah. Yeah. Which one is it? Uh, love a Come Back? Oh, okay. I don't know, something, yeah. Yeah. Do it see? Okay, yeah. Yeah.
Oh, All right, man. folks. Rocky <clears throat> Mountain Guitar Camp, August 7th through 11th. Uh, myself, John Knowles, Pat Bergeson, Brooks Robertson, Jim Nichols, and David Hamburger. We will be there in Arvada, in, uh, close to Denver, in Colorado, August 7th through 11th. Uh, RockyMountainGuitarCamp.org. See you there.